Your weeds are talking, what these five common weeds reveal about your soil health. Before diving, take a moment to hit that subscribe button and be the first to know when we upload new content. Now, if you've ever looked out at your field or garden and sighed at the sight of weeds taking over, don't be discouraged. Instead, start listening. Weeds aren't just nuisances to be eradicated, they're powerful messengers about what's going on underground. These plants have adapted to thrive in specific conditions, so their presence can actually help diagnose what your soil may lack or have too much of. Let's break down what five common weeds are saying about your soil, so you can use that insight to improve crop performance and overall land productivity. This guide is a must-watch and must-read for gardeners, homesteaders, and anyone serious about regenerative farming or soil restoration. Whether you're managing a backyard garden or a large acreage, this practical knowledge turns unwanted weeds into valuable soil advisors. Plantain and Compaction Troubles Let's start with one of the most common weeds across North America, broadleaf plantain. If you're seeing those spoon-shaped leaves hugging the ground in thick mats, take note. Plantain is nature's way of waving a red flag about soil compaction. It thrives where the soil has been packed down, reducing oxygen and limiting root development for crops. You'll often see it along walkways, near gates, or in heavily trafficked areas of a pasture or garden. Plantain's presence means your soil needs better aeration. You can start by incorporating organic matter like compost or well-rotted manure, which improves soil structure and promotes microbial activity. Deep tilling or broad forking compacted zones can also help, but do it responsibly. Tilling too frequently can damage your soil in the long run. Over time, cover cropping with tap-rooted plants like daikon radish or chicory can naturally break up hard pan layers and bring air back into the soil profile. Spotted knapweed and nutrient deficiency. If spotted knapweed has crept into your fields, it's signaling something critical. Your soil is dry, low in fertility, and likely suffering from poor organic matter. This resilient weed is often found on overgrazed pastures, roadsides, and disturbed lands where topsoil is thin and nutrients are depleted. Spotted knapweed flourishes where beneficial grasses and legumes struggle. That means if you see it, your soil is crying out for organic enrichment. Start by applying compost or using green manures like vetch and clover to rebuild fertility. Rotational grazing and resting your pastures can also help prevent the kind of degradation that allows knapweed to dominate. More than just a fertility issue, knapweed can alter the microbial balance in the soil with allelopathic compounds, chemicals that suppress other plant growth. This makes remediation even more urgent. Adding carbon-rich organic matter and inoculating the soil with beneficial microbes can help rebalance the ecosystem. Purslane and nitrogen-rich, disturbed soils. Don't underestimate purslane. This low-growing succulent weed often gets pulled without a second thought, but its appearance actually suggests your soil is in pretty good shape, at least in some ways. Purslane thrives in nitrogen-rich, well-drained soils that have been disturbed or exposed. If you see it in abundance, your land has potential, but it might need stabilization. You'll usually find purslane in areas where the soil is loose and frequently worked, such as vegetable beds or new garden plots. While its presence isn't necessarily a bad sign, it indicates that you may be losing nitrogen to the atmosphere due to overcultivation or lack of ground cover. Try mulching between crops or using living mulches like low-growing clover to reduce weed pressure and lock in soil nutrients. Interestingly, Purslane is also edible and nutrient-dense, rich in omega-3 fatty acids. But if you're not harvesting it for food, consider that its growth may be pointing towards soil that needs cover and protection to maintain its fertility. Yellow Wood Sorrel and Soil Acidity Now let's talk about Yellow Wood Sorrel. It looks like a cheerful little plant with clover-like leaves and tiny yellow flowers, but when it shows up in your garden or field, it's telling you something important. Your soil is too acidic. Acidic soil affects nutrient availability. Phosphorus, calcium, and magnesium become less accessible to plants even if they're present in the soil. This can lead to poor crop performance, stunted growth, and increased susceptibility to disease. If you're seeing a sudden spread of yellow wood sorrel, it's time to test your soil pH. To remedy acidic conditions, lime is your go-to solution. Agricultural lime or dolomitic lime can help raise pH and improve calcium-magnesium balance. The key is applying the correct amount based on your soil test results. Liming isn't a one-size-fits-all fix, it needs to be customized for your land's unique makeup. Remember, yellow wood sorrel doesn't thrive in neutral or alkaline soils, so once your pH levels are corrected, this weed will naturally fade from the landscape, and your crops will benefit from a more balanced nutrient profile. 
Canada thistle and mineral imbalance. Last but definitely not least is Canada thistle, one of the more aggressive weeds farmers and gardeners face. Its deep roots and thorny stems make it a tough adversary. But before reaching for the herbicide, take a step back and consider what it's telling you. Canada thistle thrives in high nitrogen soils where there's a poor calcium to magnesium ratio. This imbalance creates tight, sticky soil that's tough for roots to penetrate and even tougher for crops to thrive in. This weed loves disturbed, over-fertilized ground, especially when synthetic nitrogen has been overused. To push back, you'll need to do a thorough soil test, not just for pH, but for micronutrients and mineral balance. Often, gypsum can help if magnesium levels are too high, improving structure without altering pH. Reducing excessive nitrogen applications and replacing them with slow-release organic sources can also shift the balance and discourage thistle dominance. Cover crops like buckwheat and alfalfa can also outcompete Canada thistle over time while improving soil texture and fertility. With persistence and the right soil amendments, even this prickly customer can be turned back. Turn your weeds into wisdom. There you have it. Five weeds, five soil stories. Every garden, every pasture, every plot of land has its own unique language. Weeds are part of that language, whispering insights about soil compaction, fertility, pH, and mineral balance. If you learn to read these signals, you'll become not just a better gardener, but a smarter steward of your land. Instead of waging war on weeds, take a moment to ask why they're thriving in the first place. Their presence is a symptom, not the root problem. With observation, testing, and some well-planned soil amendments, you can turn these challenges into lasting improvements. If you found this guide useful, imagine what else you could learn by staying connected with us. Be sure to subscribe to Soil and Crop Central, hit the like button, and share this video with your gardening friends and farming groups. Let's turn every garden into a classroom and every weed into a lesson.